Welcome to this week's vlog already. Lots done here, Lord Marion. Can you believe it? Just a couple of weeks ago, everyone's lawns in the UK was kind of, I don't know, like that patch there. And now, absolute over there and some of the patches four or five inches in a week. It is now making up for its lack of growth this summer. As you know, <laughs> I say it often enough, don't I? But the Falkery Centre looks so magnificent when that lawn's mowed. And I've got to say, I'm looking around this evening. It's getting late now. It probably looks brighter on here than it actually is, but it's, it's getting late. It's not quite the gloaming, but the light's fading. And I look around, I look in the Averys and I look at the just the, you know, the areas of the Falkery Centre. And it's a massive credit to the team here at Icarus Falkery. You've got the girls, you've got Joe, Emily, Ursel, the sort of the mainstay crew running the experience days. And then you've got all kinds of wonderful volunteers. You've got Ryan, Leah, Olga. Um, you've got Annie on the foxes and the other animals. And what a team. So just get on. Get on with their own thing. Um, and that's that's what you need at a place like this, excuse me. <coughs> oh, I hope that's not what I think it is. Um, these sort of places need that sort of team. People that are hard working, learn their craft and get on with it and enjoy it. There's no point being somewhere like this at work or work experience or volunteering if you don't enjoy it because it is incredibly hard work, sometimes thankless, but at other times massively rewarding. And to be able to spend your time at the Falkery Centre itself with these birds in this superbly peaceful setting, work with some amazing guests. Absolutely glorious. Now, I think a little, like a special mention, no one, everyone pulls their weight here and there's, 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 you're just dividing up labour between amazing, talented, hardworking people. But I walk around and I look at the little things that Roy and Sue, and Roy's daughter have done here in a short few weeks. They really are gardeners that are making a difference. I know it sounds silly. I just edged around some of these ornamental slabs and things last weekend. We did edge the lawn. A couple of people, a couple that are giving up their time for no other reason than, than the pleasure of doing it. And they really make a difference to the Fulcrum Centre, as is everyone. So season's ending now. We've got, as you watch this, I'll have finished, or we'll have finished, the penultimate weekend of our summer openings and next weekend, the last weekend of September, that's the weekend openings. The experience stage run right up to Christmas and then we tend to have a couple of months off, rest the birds and get on with maintenance and that kind of thing. When we don't really want experience day guests to be coming here in the freezing cold, or the real midwinter cold and the dark days. So, But that's all for another vlog. Uh, reflective this week, so... As you watch this, if you watch it sort of when it comes out on Sunday evening, you will know in the world that tomorrow is the, the funeral of our Queen. Uh, yeah, it makes you reflect, doesn't it? We've all had a week to sort of digest it now. More than a week. It um, makes you look at your own lives, doesn't it? I know a lot of people, it's all been obviously on the radio and the news, it's, it's, it's the, the topic, and people have said how emotional they are, aren't it? It makes them think of their loved ones that have passed and everyone's got a story. You've got people queuing for, I think, four hours uh, in, in London um, then, um, to pay their respects, to, you know, uh, to the coffin, or the coffin, or I don't know to take them terms of these things, the, the Queen line in state. They're sort of queuing for miles and hours. Uh, so, you know, this country has been very strange, very different this week. It makes you reflect... Uh, I just think, in my reflection, it really is try and live in the moment. Oh, I struggle to do that. I do at times, but I spend most of my day thinking, well, what have I got to do next? Over busy all the time. And it does stop you living in the moment. So live in the moment. Um, and as I bang on about all the time in these vlogs, get in the countryside. If you need a bit of headspace, take your brain out. Somewhere like Icarus Falconry, of course, just being here is soothing to the soul for most of us most of the time. Just get out in the countryside. Just get out. Let your eyes fall higher than your screen of your phone when you've watched this and subscribed, of course. 
and just enjoy it. It's, we never look up now, humans. We're just rubbish at it now. We've looked down on our feet because our phone's in the way. Just get outside. My biggest advice to anyone who's stressed out or wound up, get in the countryside if you can, get in a park, go down by a canal or something like that, just to get away from human life. And if you can, get away from humans. Often does us all the world of good for a while. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. Sorry about the waffle. Very, very reflective this week. Um, and I haven't done a great deal to show you really that's, that I can show you because this week I've really been full on back at schools. Um, I found it quite exhausting. So that mental strain, because my job is a showman and I'm not a showman, but that is my job. And, and it is mentally draining when you've not done that part of your job every day of the week um, for a few weeks of the summer holidays. So not a lot of that that I can show you because I can't film in schools because of the children. You know what it's like here in the UK. Hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of the vlog and there'll be something of interest in there and I'll finally manage for you falconers. I finally managed to do a couple of uh, falconry based videos. So check that out on the falconry playlist. Please subscribe. This micro tiny baby channel I think, I don't know what it'll be when you watch this, maybe pushing towards 800 subscribers. We need a thousand to make YouTube take it realistically and start sharing it more and more rather than me and you guys sharing it on social media. If you haven't subscribed and you like even one of the videos, please hit subscribe. There'll be more stuff you like. Thanks a lot. That's something we're doing towards our summer weekends. Next year is more size. Look at this, we've sort of, I have mackled this up for a year with a bit of wood across there, but like this signage is faded and old, but it's been a lovely bit of signage and it's done really, really well. And it's been here before our time. And cactus, honestly, I swear I got these out of the Hogby greenhouses, courtesy of Matt Lagana, who cared for them. I swear I got them out like a week ago. It's unbelievable. After the last frost, these came out and we're heading towards October and they'll soon be going back in. It is absolutely scary how the time flies, but signage for, so, for sure. Uh, over there, that one's starting to go as well. We've put a lot of new signage in this year because I want stuff, a little bit of stuff to slow you down, to let you read and take stuff in. A little bit more in depth learning when you're here. Uh, we're gonna do more free lofts. So these guys here, as you, you know, if you watch the vlogs, these are going to be uh, free lofts. And soon we've got two birds going off site, two of the Harris's hawks, which are Kyle and Tommy's, and that'll free up space in different areas to free loft other birds and let them have a winter rest. But lots to do, and we're learning really fast about these weekend openings. So this is our second summer now under our belt nearly. And one thing for sure is we've got a long list of things that us and the Holdenby estate team Kerry, the Lowthers, and everyone on board there to do with the summer openings of Holden Bee in, co in conjunction with us at Icarus. We're going to have a good old conflab in October and put a lot of fresh ideas on the table. So keep it on the social media because we want you here next summer and we want you here and having the most fabulous day out that you could possibly have with you and your family. Let's go and have a quick look at Zeus. That isn't Zeus, that's Pedro. But you kind of have to look at him, don't you? Because he's too cute. <laughs> he's too cute. Unless you're a beater or a mouse, then he's the bogeyman. Stuff of nightmares. As of course are all the owls to their prey in the wild. They're blooming cute to us with that humanoid baby face. They're not to their prey. Nighttime silent assassins. You don't want to meet an owl if you're a predator. Look at Luna. She thinks, what are you doing with that camera? Let's have a look at Luna's threat display. Just a little warning. European eagle owl, probably the biggest species in the world, arguably. Formidable, formidable big beast. An owl that in the continent for sure regularly eats other diurnal birds of prey. Has a real penchant for sleeping buzzards in its menu. So it's Zeus that's going to be getting my interest a little bit more than he has done for the summer because the falconry season is underway. Mine isn't, but the falconry season is. And Zeus is on a diet. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to start his retraining, which is going to consist of exercise, just flying backwards and forwards to me, 
just to build those muscles back up a little bit. And when he's got some fitness, we're gonna be out in the field proper. And let's hope for a proper falconry season where we get to see Zeus in action, flying as a proper golden eagle should at full tilt. But that's all for another video and another vlog. But for sure, it's great to get that excited feeling in your tummy that it's soon going to be time to work with your personal falconry bird. And that goes for any falconer in the world at the start of the season. And he's my baby. And it's Zeus that's going to be my partner in crime very, very soon through the winter as a falconry bird. And just look at these. So today I've actually been doing a bird of prey talk in a school. And my, my overriding thing is I asked the guys, what is a bird of prey? Most of them know, but then I'll get a crow or a heron thrown in or a seagull, even a robin or a blackbird, sometimes a pigeon or a parrot. And my argument is loads of birds prey on animals. And they have a special shaped beak to catch, kill and eat the animals they really prefer on their menu. Birds of prey, what makes you stand out as a bird of prey is that beak is a ripping tool for eating, not for catching your dinner. You catch your dinner with incredibly strong legs and feet armed with these huge talons. And the way they work is so powerful. Average sort of weight that birds of prey can handle is something maybe up to three times their own weight. With a golden eagle, that scale is way out of proportion. You're talking foxes and deer in their wild state, as a, as a top end of their prey range. He's just so handsome, isn't he? I really shouldn't be filming him for this long. But look at him. Absolutely gorgeous. Golden Eagle. What a beautiful icon. Just so he didn't feel left out. Well, we're gonna get through here. Cool. <laughs> Bodie the kestrel is about 14 years old. Can you imagine a wild kestrel living for 14 years? It's never gonna happen. He's ruled the sky here at Icarus Fall Curry for most of his life. Seen off birds as big as buzzards. This is his territory. He's a kestrel, the flying Jack Russell, and he has seen everything off. His age is telling this year. We've got a new kid on the block, a young wild kestrel, which has set up its territory here at Holdenby, and it is beating the bananas out of Bodie here. They had a full on scrap this week. Jo almost got her hands on both birds on the floor. They were so scrapping so badly, and poor old Bodie got his left eye eyelid caught by a talon and was very, very lucky indeed that it just swelled up a little bit and soon got better on its own. That's nature. No wild kestrel is going to be holding down a territory at 14 years old. Let's go and have a quick look in the menagerie. Well, someone's having a look over here, Roxy the Fox. Check out the Roxy Diaries on the channel. Oh, spooked. Hello, darling. Look at that, what a beauty. Hello, baby girl. Oh, you're nervous of me. Don't want to come this way to see you, do I? Nah, look at that. So Roxy's a real star. She's got a full sort of malt finish now. Looking sleek and not all moth-eaten. And soon, she'll probably end up molting again into a thick winter coat. Super, super tame. Check out the diaries to see just how amazing she is. Completely hand-reared and reared with dogs and people. But you still get asked, why can't you let her go then? She sees dogs and people as her friends, all of them. <laughs> and she wants to play with any of them. Running towards any dog she sees and running towards any people she sees. Hardly gonna last five minutes in the wild. Why would she want to be wild? It's very, very tough out there. Bodie the Kestrel, remember, 14 years old. 
he lived to be three years old in the wild. He'd be doing very, very well indeed. It is a tough old world. Anyway, we haven't got smell of vision, but I can tell you now, foxes sure do smell foxy. It's a real change of seasons. It's actually quite cool now. It's cold in the morning as well. Cool. It's autumnal. We can't imagine it being 35 degrees centigrade anymore. And that means that normally the hedgehog is starting to wind down, eat less, less active, and it's going to be time to get her out of her enclosure and back into her winter quarters where she doesn't hibernate. We was advised by the hedgehog rescue with her, keep her awake through the winter. Far less risky for her health. So no hedgehog to see here and she's under there. Time to come out soon and be pampered. Well, these things have been a pain in my bottom. The fantastic European polecats in the wildlife section. They are absolutely fantastic. Their enclosure's still half finished. I'm gonna get on that this week. They're still able to return to their original sort of rearing housing. No high level stuff in the enclosure yet, but that's coming. They are loving it in here, but winding me up and I'll tell you why. Here's the door area, hold on. Open the door. There we go, concrete and smooth for the door base to slide over. Lots of stuff here, around the corner, litter corner, because that's the corner they were using in their original housing. The same kind of corner in the same direction. Sawdust there, because that's what they're using in there. No, they want to cover this whole area in the vilest, smelliest, runniest, sloppiest kind of ferrety poo, so that when I walk in the door, the door drags through the poo and you tread in it. All of that. And that's the corner they want to use. I've put hay on it to try and discourage them because they're going for the bare concrete. We will see. But other than that, they are absolutely brilliant animals, these polecats. And to see them in this enclosure, running around and enjoying it and exploring, absolutely brilliant. It's going to be an awful, awful lot better <laughs> when we've got it fully done out for them. A little log pile and everything. Watch this space. Probably the cutest inhabitants of the harvest mice. They are so sweet, look at that. Another unsung hero amongst our volunteer team is Karen. Karen used to volunteer hands-on here at Icarus Falconry. Um, when COVID hit, um, she stopped. Well, everyone's kind of had to stop to a degree, didn't they? Everything stopped. And nowadays, she's an unsung hero because no one sees her anymore. But she runs our adopters here. A uh, lovely gift they make uh, and a lovely way of giving something back to the Falkery Centre to sort of help us help them, I guess. Um, so the adopters are all run by Karen, all in her own time, all for love. And again, just another example of people really sort of being part of the Icarus Falkery community and just, just doing stuff out of love and passion, really. Female black-headed python. What a spectacular animal. She's had a big meal, so she's basking under the heat lamp, warming herself up, digesting that food. Another month or so, we're going to start cooling the black-headed pythons down during the night, whacking the temperature up in the day, but cooling right down at night. And hopefully, like last year, That'll trigger a breeding response. We've got two successfully hatched young this year from about nine eggs. Let's hope we can do better next year, but only time will tell because first, we've got to get fertile eggs. But that's a little way off for now. The pythons are just doing their thing. A lot of snoozing, a fair bit of eating, and a lot of sunbathing. They really are a wonderful species, black-headed pythons. They're an Australian species, very unlike all the other pythons, apart from 
the worm of python which is closely related black-headed pythons just got the edge edge on the good luck factor for sure tiny little heads for a python very prehistoric sort of python very different from the the other pythons with their relatively quite big heads and no small neck area black-headed very different indeed and reptile eaters in the wild bless her we've upset her she's going uh, lovely lovely patterns these are huge well not huge but certainly large male black rat snake not the natural color phase a captive bred color morph i do prefer the wild type of most species of snakes but it's a handsome devil and he's a lovely boy he comes on many of the school trips now but he's got a two-year wait before his girlfriend catches up to breeding age and size black rat snakes Massively underrated in the UK these days. It's a North American species, but deserves to be even more popular than they are. That is a sunbathing heron, just like our vultures and kites do. And I've never seen a heron do that before. As much as I think ivy is vile in your garden, unless it's a huge woodland garden, because it is so destructive to property, it is without doubt one of the most important plants in nature. It provides so much habitat, but it also provides a really late source of nectar and pollen. Really, really important for many, many insects especially. We have a species of flies on here, loads of bees, very important plant in the English countryside for sure. Plant it against your property at your peril though. Here's an interesting plant, horsetail. Dreadful agricultural and even a garden weed. It's actually really hard to kill with weed killers and the way it spreads through the ground, it can certainly take over. But what's interesting about this is this stuff is prehistoric and it's been around certainly at the time of the dinosaurs. So an agricultural weed, but certainly an interesting 
prehistoric plant that is in the fossil record. We've got burdock, the forerunner of Velcro. And here, it's a biennial, so it grows for a year and then flowers in the next year. Here's a younger one. And if you can be bothered to dig that up, it's got a nice starchy edible root. I can't believe how cold it is at night. It's gonna be four degrees tonight, four degrees C. It is unbelievable. Uh, I've got my hat on to keep the sun out of my eyes, but I've actually had a woolly hat on yesterday afternoon, a woolly hat, I'm wearing a shirt and a jumper. We really have had a proper sort of change of seasons this year, proper summer, boom, it's autumn. So very, very different now. Things are changing, the grass is green um, and the birds start to get the need for more food because obviously just like us they bu they burn calories to keep warm so we also have to keep much more of an eye on the birds and, and more judiciously weigh them and keep an eye on their weight and their condition and in some cases the smaller birds they eat so much more food just to keep their bodies warm through the colder weather so all change here at the Fulcrum Centre for me it's probably going to be another week of flying words or the bald eagle and then we're going to shift gears and change over to some proper fulcrum and I'll start training and retraining or reworking with Zeus the Golden Eagle and this is it. If, if you're out in the countryside, and we are really, you, you really see the change of season. So, I mean, those poor conker trees, that's terrible with the drought and the, the horse chestnut blight. But all of this here that you see now, it's weird, isn't it? Because we're going to go into a phase soon where all of this is going to be see-through, skeletal. Very, very big changes in the countryside. And it's nice to see those seasons. It's actually nice to sort of feel the change. But today, beautiful weather absolutely gorgeous this is this is or if we have an autumn and a winter with blue skies and bright sunshine now and again rather than just wind and rain fingers crossed that'll be really nice i hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog check out the others check out the playlist really importantly as i keep banging on about please subscribe help us get to that thousand mark where youtube will sort of take the channel a little bit more seriously and spread it further and wider but thanks for all your support guys we'll see you in the next one